Welcome to the Landscaping Podcast. My name is Joel Barnett and I am your host. And in today's episode, we're talking with Jamal Steer from FCG Landscaping and the Frame Landscaper. So Jamal's got a design and construction business, the FCG Landscaping, he's in Sydney. And he's also got his side project of uh, the Frame Landscaper where he's selling um, horticultural prints that his brother takes the photos of. So it was great hearing how he started that business up. There's a bit of a hobby and it's starting to do well. So and he's got some good good items on there and also talk about how Jamal started out in uh, hospitality and and then green keeping worked his way up into doing garden maintenance and then did some studying outside of work and then he's got his own business there where he does the construction and design as well so he's sort of built his way up right from maintenance up to the construction and design and he's got a, a staff of five including himself now as well so it's good seeing that story so hopefully you enjoy this episode with Jamal Steer. Jamal, thank you for joining us on the Landscaping Podcast. Um, so the first thing I'd like to ask you is to find out how it all started for you and how you got into the landscaping industry. When I first left school, I was um, I was actually a chef. I wanted to be a chef from a little kid. But then I uh, started working for a, sh- uh, a restaurant for a few months and found out I didn't really like it. Uh, they asked me to work, I think, a New Year's Eve one day and... Uh, I think that was it. So I started, started looking for another job and uh, became a greenkeeper to begin with at a, at a bowling club. Yeah, from there, just was there for about one year and um, slowly started to get a passion for, for the garden side of things. I was getting a bit bored of uh, mowing greens and rolling greens and, and all that sort of thing. Um, and from there... I decided to get into garden maintenance, um, working for a company that had a business park in the middle of the city. So we looked after, uh, I, think a, I think, a few uh, hectares in Alexandria in Sydney. I'm not sure if you, you know where that is. So I was there for maybe three or four years. And in that time, uh, my boss at the time was, I was lucky enough for him to uh, put me through my landscape apprenticeship uh, through TAFE. Uh, so I was working full time in the garden maintenance side of things and, and doing my apprenticeship a couple of days a week as well. And from there, I was at that business park and I was doing a bit of project management for the boss at the time as well, looking after a few projects on the site with other trades and um, other builders and stuff and started to get a pretty good knowledge of um, working with other tradesmen. Uh, from a pretty young age, I think. I think I was about 21 or 22 at the time. So it was a good learning experience. And I think I was there for about four or five years. And after that, um, decided to go out on my own and just start a little start a, a little maintenance company. Just doing lawns and hedges and, and all that sort of thing. And from there, I think I just had one client. My first client was my, my boss from the business park. Then I got uh, the neighbor's property, the neighbor's property a few doors up and slowly from there just uh, started doing more and more jobs until, yeah, to, to where I am today. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty fortunate. So I saw your, um, the business name is FCG Landscape. Where does that come from? Is that part of the, ma- the original maintenance company you started? Uh, yeah, that's, so the, the original name was, uh, was actually First Class Grass. At the time, it was a bit of a joke with a few friends and um, it was more about the mowing side of things. And yeah, I thought, oh, if I'm going to do this properly, I better, um, you know, better get serious about the name and, and the business. So that's why I just abbreviated it. And um, yeah, that's uh, how FCG Landscaping came about. Yep. And did, with the apprenticeship you did, was that in, um, like, did you do any landscape construction as part of that apprenticeship? Uh, yes, yeah, so I've done landscape construction uh, at TAFE. I only completed, I think, two and a half or about two and a half years as I had a, um, had a daughter that come along. And as you, as you probably know, life uh, throws a few curveballs and I couldn't, uh, it didn't end up finishing the, the actual course at TAFE. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, meet a, uh, another apprentice who is now a good friend of mine. Um, Adam from Adam on Landscaping and um, was doing a few jobs with him uh, for, for many years and um, over time eventually he um, I started to um, learn more on the job for that last uh, year or so and eventually just got uh, signed off as the um, recognised prior learning uh, program they have. 
I was very lucky to um, meet another good landscaper that taught me uh, quite a lot to what I know today. So Yeah, you're going to learn so much more working on site than what you would at TAFE. So that's a good way to go about it anyway. Yeah, that's right. I, I learn a lot more uh, on site than, than, than in the classroom. So how long have you been running the business now? Like how old are you now? I'm uh, 32 now, so I've uh, been running the business for, I think, seven years. Yep. Seven years, um, yeah, about seven years now. And you do, uh, do you still do maintenance as well as construction? Uh, not really. I got rid of the, the maintenance side of things uh, probably about a year or a year and a half ago. Um, as much as I like doing the maintenance, it was sort of uh, slowing my progress down with the construction side of things. I still do some maintenance for the uh, for the jobs that we build, just so I can keep an eye on the jobs and make sure they're growing properly and and to their potential. Yeah, but it's only only a handful of properties I, I look after now, and uh, yeah, I prefer just to just to maintain the jobs we build. Yeah, I found we tried it a little bit uh, about six years ago. I reckon back when I got back into landscaping, tried to start off a little bit of maintenance as well. But uh, I yeah. found you need to have a dedicated team to work on the maintenance to make it worthwhile because it, yeah, it does take you away from the construction side of things we can make a lot more profit on is yeah, that the that's same? Right. yeah that's right i was i i crunched the numbers one day on the maintenance side of things and um i had a look at it and yeah it just it didn't look too good wasn't losing money but wasn't making money either um and yeah, my passion was for building the gardens and designing the gardens unfortunately i lost the uh, quite a few clients that i had from Pretty much from day one, but I tried to make the transition to their new um, their new contractor as seamless as possible. And yep. yeah, yeah, and the same with the like, you know, there's no point having someone who's qualified to do landscape construction doing maintenance because someone who's qualified for maintenance is going to be a lot more skilled in that area as well. So you're better off staying in your lane a little bit that way. Yeah, that's right, but. Um, in saying that, I, I still uh, appreciate the time I did have in, in, in the maintenance side of the, the industry because you do learn a lot more about uh, gardens and plants and, and stuff uh, doing that as opposed to some, you know, some landscape guys or construction guys might not know too much about the plants or how the garden is supposed to look in four to five years um, where I sort of had that uh, opportunity to, to maintain and look after them and sort of know what they're going to look like. Uh, once their potential is reached. So they're, they're, there's a good and bad side to it. Yeah, I agree 100%. So what size crew do you have at the moment? At the moment, I have, um, I've got uh, four plus myself. Um, one of them uh, is a girl I met at TAFE while I was doing my um, design course. Uh, she does a lot of the designs uh, with myself at the moment. And then three other guys uh, on, on the ground doing doing the gardens. Yep. So was that so that uh, design course that separate to the initial landscape course you've done that after starting the business with you? Uh, yeah, that's right. So um, I've done that probably three years ago, or yeah, two and a half, three years ago. Um, after being in the construction business, as I always had uh, a passion for the design in the gardens and. I was only sort of doing uh, hand-drawn sketches for clients and uh, as, you, as you've probably done as well, it was just, you know, a little mud map of, of, of how things are going to look. Uh, but I wanted to, to, to take that to um, another level and uh, yeah, another way of, uh, you know, making a bit of money in the landscaping industry. So do you do any designs that you don't build or are they all just ones for, you, for your clients that you build as well? Um, initially... Initially, it's all uh, designs that, that we build, but lately, over the last probably few months, um, it's starting to get a few more clients that just want the design, whether they're going to uh, build it themselves or get another contractor in to do it. Um, there's a, so enjoying that side of things as well. Yeah, I've seen on your Instagram, uh, you've got some SketchUp skills. Did you learn that at the course or is that like self-taught? Uh, well, that's actually the, the other girl that works for me. Um, oh. I, I only learned the I only learned the other program. Uh, I think it was Landworks at TAFE. Yep. Um, so I met her in TAFE, and uh, she finished uh, before me. Um, but I could see from in the classroom that she was uh, probably one of the best students in the class. And I approached her one day to help me with a design um, 
uh, on the computer as I was still learning the design side of things at TAFE. From there, um, yeah, she's she sort of self-taught herself, uh, SketchUp and other programs as well to, to you know, make the designs what they are, uh, as, as you can see them. Uh, but I'm finding um, that when I'm training, well, she's sort of training herself, but uh, I get a fair bit of enjoyment uh, out of that, her learning and uh, growing within the company as well. Because I think she'll be a really good designer one day and eventually she's going to work for herself. So I, I get a bit of enjoyment out of that watching her her progress uh learning and and, and developing as as a designer yeah that's pretty cool having a story that you went to tape as well and then hooked up so that's yeah. why i like um sending my staff to tape rather than having someone come out on site where they could do their schooling and just so they're on site more but they get yeah. good connections by going to tape and meet meeting other people there in the same industry so i think it's yeah that's right and yeah the, you make some good uh connections from from tape and 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 uh, and other uh, you know uh, learning uh, agencies or whatever they're called. I'm the same as you. I've, uh, I learned Landworks CAD when I started off, uh, and I think it's pretty good for for doing 2D, uh, and it's got the capability to do 3D. But I think yeah. uh, SketchUp is a lot easier. But again, it's just something you've got to learn, and uh, which takes time. Yeah, that's right. And um, it's time I I would have lost on site or on the jobs or quoting or, or other things like that. Um, so uh, she's been with me since I think January uh, this year. And yeah, so I'm sort of, she's training herself. I'm still, I'm still learning along the way, but yeah, just looking, looking, really enjoying the design side of things as well at the moment. Do you do any construction as well? So you're on site doing that? Uh, yeah, I'm on site, but uh, probably the time on the tools is probably a, a little bit limited to what it used to be. Um, as you can imagine, you, you probably got a couple of jobs running at uh, once and having to run around and, and supervise and you know, make sure everything's uh, running smoothly. So uh, the time on the tours is pretty limited uh, when, when I am there. My main day is when the plants are going in. That's, what, that's definitely when I'm there. And uh, that's my favourite part of the job, just seeing it all come together and watching all the hard work you know, from the beginning uh, right up until the end. That's when the clients can really appreciate appreciate the job. Yeah, that, yeah. I said I've said it to a couple of people. That's when the magic happens to the plants go in. Um, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that makes such it makes such a big difference, softening the space, and then you can see the full vision as well. Yeah, that, yeah that's definitely definitely right. And I saw you were doing a design for a client in Melbourne. How did that come about? Seeing so how you were in uh, New South Wales. Um, uh, probably probably just Instagram. To be honest, uh, I think that's how they found me. I've had a couple of inquiries from from Melbourne before, but yeah, so I was pretty excited to to get to get that design and um, still working on it at the moment. So how did that go about? Did you do like a Zoom in, Zoom meeting with that, and they like how did you get the, the site? Um, initially, it was just by email and a design brief and plans of the house and all the photos of of the property and stuff. And then I had a phone call with him um, before I started the design, just to run through everything and uh, make sure we're all on the same page in the in the um, uh, direction of the design. But yeah, it's uh, really interesting, and uh, looking forward to hopefully doing a few more uh, interstate and, and out of Sydney as well. Cool. Have you? Well, I suppose you haven't done, haven't finished it yet, but have you done any research into different types of plants that you'll be using, and that sort of thing? Yeah. Well, I've been. Um, you know, looking online and doing a little bit of research, very, very different climates down there. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of the plants probably I'm not used to uh, using uh, in Sydney. But in saying that, uh, Instagram's a pretty, uh, you know, pretty cool tool to have a look at all the other landscapers and designers and just get a few ideas and, and, and um, you know, put my own spin on it. Yeah, cool. So. Sounds good. Now, I saw um, on your Instagram I was, when I was, Trolling back through it, you did some sort of installation in what's like the CBD Sydney a few years ago. What was uh, that? Yeah, we've done a we've done a display garden in in Martin Place, um, which is pretty pretty much just in the heart of the city. Yeah, um, it was to showcase a, a. This was when we were in the middle of the drought, uh, so Sydney Water had approached a, a company about doing a I think it was a PR thing about how to save water in the garden and all of that. Um, so I was approached by that company to come up with a design and um, an install a two-day installation in the city, which was uh, pretty pretty nerve-wracking as it was my 
sort of first uh, public uh, garden display and and design in that in that case. So yeah, a few a few sleepless nights and a lot of stress went into that, but uh, yeah, I was pretty pretty happy with the with the outcome of it. And it all went well. Didn't have any any dramas during the installation. I imagine the uh, logistics would have been challenging if it's in the CBD. Um, uh, the, it was all it was more about the planning. Just everything sort of um, had to be planned, you know, exactly uh, to schedule and everything. There was a lot of prep work done before the install day. Stuff being made off site and planter boxes and timbers cut and and all that sort of thing. So um, it was probably a a, a two-month process of planning and uh, prepping it all, but on the day the the uh, the install went pretty 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 smoothly. Actually, I was uh, not surprised, but um, yeah, I was sort of uh, relieved. I, I yeah. would say that it, it all ran smoothly. So, and I saw you've got uh, now uh, the framed landscape. You've started that business as well. I can see a couple of photos over your shoulder that I've seen on that um, side. And the photos look awesome. So where did the inspiration for that come from to start that? Um, well, I was just, I was looking online one day to buy a few um, prints from my place just to, to hang up. And as I have a, um, a bit of a love for cactuses and, and unique plants, I was sort of looking online and I uh, couldn't really find anything that I, um, that I, I really liked, to be honest. So I found a few, but nothing that stood out and so I didn't think too much of it. I, I bought the prints and hung them on my wall. And a couple of months later, I was looking at them and thought, well, maybe, um, yeah, maybe this something guy could do. Uh, my brother's a photographer, so I was lucky enough to get him to come along and photograph all the, all, all the plants and um, do that side of things. But yeah, it's just more, it's more of a hobby that sort of thought, oh, you know, why not uh, try something else and um, be good to venture into the online world and and see how that is. Yeah, very different to landscaping, but yeah, yeah I've been enjoying it so far, and um, yeah, so it's been good. It does, they do look pretty cool, especially the black and white, like the Madagascan palm and and the cactus. So yeah, I love the look of it. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, so have you got any um, like, any, like do you do do you use Lamo's CAD for your designs, and then? then they get drawn up on SketchUp or how does that design process work? Um, so we, we moved over to uh, Vectorworks uh, now for all the 2D uh, designs. Uh, so we do the initial uh, design on that and then, then it gets taken over to SketchUp. We were doing uh, some 3D works on Vectorworks to begin with, but uh, as we we're wanting to improve the quality of the design and, and, and the 3Ds, just thought SketchUp was a Bit more user friendly and a, and a probably a better looking program if, if if that makes sense. So you do you so say you draw it on Vectorworks first and then and then go across onto the yeah then we SketchUp. go across to uh, to SketchUp. But the girl working for me now she, we're we're still we're sort of still training each other and uh, still learning the program. So um, yeah, every design is a is a new um, a new challenge and a new uh, experience we look forward to and. Uh, trying to improve uh, each one uh, a, a, as we go. Yeah, that's all you can do. Um, so where about to get most of your work from? Like, do you do any advertising? Oh, a few years ago, I used to advertise um, on Facebook and Instagram. I didn't really get too much out of it. It's more just word of mouth, to be honest. So it, word of mouth and, and probably Instagram is, is where we get most, most of our work now. The best type of advertising is the word of mouth. Just keep the... You keep the client happy, and if they're happy with the job, they'll they'll refer refer you to the next one. Yeah. And what part of the New South Wales do you work in? Sorry, should have asked that at the start. Uh, well, in in the Sydney metro, so um, yeah, pretty much we, we travel all over Sydney. We've done a little bit of work down down south a bit, uh, all the way up to Northern Beaches. Usually travel within an hour uh, of where we live. And how's the current the lockdown? For COVID being for you, has it? Have you had to take much time off work? Uh, this lockdown had to take four weeks off work, which has has been a bit difficult, uh, as you can imagine, like everyone else. But in saying that, la I think last COVID uh, last year, the business probably actually got uh, busy, more busier than ever, with people not being able to travel or um, uh, yeah, pretty much they can't travel, so they got had a bit more money to spend on their houses. As, 
and they're sitting at home thinking, uh, what can we do to the place? So um, it was a blessing last year. But this year it's been um, a little bit more difficult with losing losing uh, time on the job. Uh, it's just going to be yeah, pretty hard to catch up um, these next few months before Christmas. Yeah, I was saying to someone today, actually, that it feels like the Christmas rush has started now and we're still four, oh, and, yeah. four and a half months out. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're only two weeks to spring and uh, yeah, then, then what, four months to, to Christmas. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be fun times. It is. Do you have any plans with the business in terms of, like, say, you've currently got three guys on on um, on site and one in the office. Do you have any plans on changing or like growing it in any any stage? Um, I'm pretty pretty comfortable with uh, the number that we have now. Pretty lucky to have um, a good group of subcontractors as well. Uh, you know, from stonemasons to uh, concreters, tilers, which um, you know takes a bit of pressure off us on the job. Yeah, so I, I don't see myself expanding uh, too much more than that. About keeping the, the right guys together and 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 the right subcontractors and yeah, it's getting the jobs done. Uh, yeah. Done as best as they can. Yeah, I think that's good because a lot of people uh, seem to grow for the sake of growing, but they don't actually have a plan. They just think that's what people are supposed to do. But I think, yeah, yeah. if you if you've got a good team, then it's good to keep it at that. Extent. And just because things are comfortable, it means you can do things well. So you can do a high, yeah. high quality product. Yeah, that's right. I used to have the mindset of you know. I want to have 20 people working for me and, and all of this. But um, as I slowly, slowly uh, grew to realise it's probably not the best way to, uh, you know, to, to run a, a, a business for myself personally. I'd like to be able to keep an eye on everything as much as possible. And I personally feel if I expanded any bigger, just the probably quality would, uh, would drop uh, just because not, not personally being able to be there and uh, supervise everything. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter how good the guys on site are. Like it's, um, yeah. There's only one of you, so you can only be on site on one job at a time. Yeah, that's right. So if you were, if you had, were going to give advice to yourself back when you were starting out, would you do anything differently to the way you went about it? Uh, probably not. Uh, I always sort of uh, gave everything a, a, a good crack, and um, you know, if if there was an issue or there was any mistakes, I probably believe that would mistakes or, or lessons in life for a reason. So probably the only advice I would give myself is just uh, go after it. And Yeah, but you, you've done that anyway, so that's good. But yeah. Yeah, yeah so try, try my way. best. Yeah. Got any uh, favourite pieces of uh, tools or, or equipment that you use? I was saying to someone the other day, probably the, the, the cordless reciprocator saw is probably one of my favourite tools. Yeah. Pretty, pretty versatile, useful tool for, for most things uh, on, on the job. Well, plants are my passion, so that's probably uh, if that's if I could say that's the tool. Um, yeah. That's probably 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 my favourite thing. Have you got a favourite one? It's hard to pick one, but um, probably probably the Amac, uh, the Euphorbia Amac cactus. That's probably probably one of my favourites. So. so, do you get um, many of your plants off Bamboo South Coast? Uh, yeah, I've used Clint uh, a few times before. He's he's got some nice stock down there. Yeah, um, but yeah, got a got a few supplies here in Sydney. Um, yeah, right. just a bit closer yeah. to home. Yeah, all right, Jamal. Thank you very much for your time on the podcast today. I really appreciate it uh, coming on. So, no, no dramas. Thanks a lot for having me, Joel. And uh, they really been enjoy enjoying the the podcast. To be honest, I was uh, pretty excited to hear you were bringing one out. Um, been looking forward to listening to a, a landscaping one in Australia with uh, other landscapers um, and designers as well. So it's been been really good listening and hearing the insight to other companies and, and how they go about it. So no, really enjoying it and thanks for having me on. Uh, thank you. Did you listen to any other podcasts as well? Have you got any other, rec other ones you'd recommend landscaping? Landscaping ones? Um, uh, to be honest, no. Uh, that's why I was pretty excited when you when you started your one up. Not good. Uh, but yeah, I do listen to a few podcasts, but yeah, nothing uh, landscaping related. Yeah. So. No worries. Thank you, Jamal. No worries. Thanks, Joel.